One of my favorite items for in and around the ham shack is this humble 12 inch Amazon laminator. With it, I can do a full sheet, you know, standard eight by 11 or whatever sheet, uh, or I can also put a card, like an index card or like a credit card size card that has little laminator sheaths that I can make really nice little lists, lists that include the stuff that goes in my go bag. Simple little instructions on how to perform like a memory channel save on a radio. But the downside with lamination is that you oftentimes have this big bulk of cards. They're hard, hard to bind together. And then obviously once they're laminated, you can't really add to them. So it kind of makes them a once in time moment you've captured. And if anything changes, you might just not be able to update it. Now, while it would be spectacular to sit down and just make laminated sheets and then bind them themselves, you now have to think of what do we put on that? Instructions for your favorite radio, weather conditions, local frequencies to listen to, possibly even some kind of a map. Now, this is all possible and you can take your time and do the laminated thing or possibly even print on right in the rain papers. There's somebody that's already done this and that's what we're gonna talk about on today's episode. Austin KC2SAH put this into my hands, which is the off-grid WX and that's like off-grid weather, but it's a field reference guide and it's even better because it's modular and it's all printed on right in the rain paper. This is something where we need to go definitely onto the tabletop here so you can take a look at it. Links will be in the description for my laminator, but also the really good work Austin's doing in filling an area a hole if you will that people know they want but they don't know where to start or they possibly just don't have the time to do it so good job austin take a look at the link in the description so we're taking a look at the off-grid wx you can go to offgridwx.com field reference guide they got a number of things uh, on their website but it's using a right in the rain kind of binder ish thing and this is a six ring binder so make sure you've got the right holes for it Standard measurements, I believe this is all right in the rain stuff on the outside of this, not necessarily added, but uh, there's a pocket as well, which is kind of useful. So let's punch in a little bit here. Made in the USA, you gotta like that. It's all printed on right in the rain material. Gives you a bit of a background on what the core idea is. I will put emergency contacts in here, but I figured I'm making a, a video. So I'm not gonna dox my wife uh, with our contact information, but yeah, you should do that. I use a right in the rain pen too while you're at it. Right at the get go, there's some things I didn't even know about, like carrier AT&T. If you email to text, you can, I guess, put the phone number in with uh, that particular at, at txt.att.net. I didn't even know that was a thing. So apparently that's something that, and there you go. There's right off the bat. Uh, then it covers the band plan, US Amateur Radio band plan. So that's kind of useful for those of you that don't remember it. I certainly don't, particularly when it comes to breaking some of this stuff down. So for instance, if we go to 10 meters, it tells you where the Ridian data portions are versus phone and image. Obviously single sideband is what we're talking about here. Uh, license for technician, general, breaks that down, different license modes. Breaks down off-grid weather data repository. You can do Winlink, Iridium, I don't know what a GRIB file is. <laughs> That's sale docs. Okay, see, I didn't know that. And then, yeah, check this out. So you can add things like the tech prepper reference data. There you go. You can do TPP to the URL, uh, and you can get whatever you need here for Kepler's, for ham common radios, for as far as frequency is concerned, weather updates, the list goes on. It's it's actually pretty interesting. So a lot of this stuff I didn't even know. Like, let, let, wait, hold on. Let, let's get back into here. Hold on now. Hold on. Let's let's get into this. So, so while editing the video, I wanted to verify this whole off-grid data repository request thing because it was a part in this document that I, I didn't make enough of a, a note on. <clears throat> I ended up reaching out to Austin to figure out, you know, kind of how this worked. And uh, I was able to, to access this without having him help me. But he's got a request set up for, for all these different files that we talked about in the video. This is perfect. This is like an off-grid type of thing you might do. So let's, let's bring up an email here. So I'm going to say inquiry. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put TP, TTP in here. And I'm going to say send. And it's going to be HTTPS, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash OG off grid WX dot info forward slash TTP. So I should be able to send that now. So post to my outbox and uh, go ahead and start a transmission. We might be out of band. 
we might have lost the band window for our last station because it's been a couple hours since I was playing with this, but I wanted to get this on video because it's pretty interesting. So you can see my 7610 ahead of me. Uh, we are sending and receiving data back and forth. In fact, let's let's go ahead and ju jump this in a little bit for you. And we're a bit wide on the filtering, so I'll throttle that down to 2.4. That should help us out a little bit. Okay, so I, I did the first crack at this and I ran into a problem, but my email was formatted correctly. So Austin should have updated it. So hypothetically, give it a second or two and we should be able to download those TTP reference files and we'll take a look. So I started another download here to see if we've got the document coming in and it looks like we've got query sale bots TPP. So we are receiving something. Now, I don't know if this is, let's see. All right, info from off-grid repository, up-to-date information, TPP APRS message group info. Send message to TPP APR, TTP APRS message group, and then it runs through the whole instructions of what you need to do. So that did work. Okay. FYI, that station that I was making contact with was 1,300 kilometers away from my home station. That's pretty good. It's working as expected. And really, it's just the notebook, my ability to send a WinLink message and then receive it. So I'm off grid, really, hypothetically. I'm, I'm not connected to any internet now to do this. Pretty cool. That's a pretty useful uh, tool to have in the arsenal for sure. Continuing down the WinLink request listing, if you send inquiry with your WinLink client, so you're on your computer or you're using WOAD or, or whatever, you can actually get pictures from Noah, it looks like. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's an IR sat image. You can get Keplerian elements, but check this out. You can get a picture of Australia. You can get the Gulf of Mexico, the Pacific Islands. You can get GOES IR sat information, Samoa. Like, there's a ton of these reference pieces in here that I didn't even really know about. This is pretty insane what you can get information for. There's a whole list of help listings that you can get within WinLink as well as forecasts for the Arctic region, the Atlantic region, the Gulf Coast. Let's go down the list and see Pacific. So that's something I might want to pull up if I'm looking for any storm warnings or anything along those lines. These are all things that you can send by adding this request. So if we added WTPA21.PHFO, we get the Central Pacific Tropical Forecast and Advisory notification. That's awesome. I, like I said, a lot of this I didn't even know about. So if I wanted to get California, I could go down this list and probably find it. This will give you uh, weather in the U.S. So where's California? Northern California. There's probably a Southern California. There's another one for California as well for listing on weather situations. So for those of you that are like, well, I don't have a wind link station set up, so why, why should I care about that? Well, that's where things kind of start getting interesting for you landlubbers that are not sail based or wind link based. This is where it starts breaking down frequencies that you might most commonly use. So all the weather stations for NOAA, all of the marine channels are listed. Marine citizens band, so CB, FRS, GMRS, and yeah, they're pretty much the same, but you, you know what I mean here. Some of these also not familiar with, uh, aircraft emergency and distress, Unicom for aircraft, HAM, ISS, so it covers the ISS information, six meter call, two meter call, APRS, and then it goes all the way down the list through things like JSA call, what frequencies you'd use there, FT8 as well, although FT8 is not really an emergency standard. It's still kind of interesting to have the capability and again, have it just listed in case you can't remember what the frequency is and maybe you have to hand key it in. Now this is listed as common frequencies, which, okay, that's that's fine. PSK, MFSK, RIDI, JT65, Olivia, SSTV. Some of these are pretty much universal standards like 14.230 for SSTV, but not necessarily all of them. So no big deal there. But then you got like just a little sheet you can add your own to it. There's a couple there. And then here is the really cool one. I did see this and I, I tried some of this out. So here is the breakdown of all your common APRS commands that you might be dropping out there. Um, and yeah, th these are all things like SMS, send message to SMS, SMS to APRS, add a new alias. So like if I wanted to add my wife, I could add an alias there, remove an alias, receive weather, query wind link messages. You could reply, list, read, delete, forward any of your wind link messages, a whole co host of things you can do. Um, there's also a couple you can add in here as well. So there's a blank action to message from giving you the capability to set that up as well as a blank spot that you can add more. 
And that goes even further into MPAD. You can add things like car rental, butcher, motels, motor. I don't even know what some of these do, um, but gives you a whole list of things. Again, APRS commands that you can launch from your radio, your computer, or whatever, so long as you have a radio connection. That's pretty cool. Of course, expectation is you can hit a digipeter because that's not always the case. Weather data, position inquiry. And then here's a list of common Q codes. QRZ, who's calling me, QRO, abbreviation of uh, QSO is abbreviation of a contact, QSL, QSL is just a confirmation, your phonetic alphabet. Organization can be changed, by the way, too. You don't have to keep it in this uh, format, unless, unless, and, and do keep this in mind, uh, some of these are multi-pages that split, so APRS command should probably stay together. You get the idea. Here is something, the RST system, so readability, meaning how good the signal was. So when we say it's a 5.9 or a 5.5.9 in the case of Morse code. So five is perfectly readable, and then one through nine is basically that S meter display. And then lastly, tone is one through nine again for Morse code operators. ARRL communication procedures, okay. So if you're running traffic for the ARRL, that's what you do. Time conversion table, temperature conversion table, solar panel tilt azimuth angles. Didn't even know I need that, but I have panels. Distance conversion. Now here's an interesting one that some of you folks may not remember, but quarter wave dipoles, half wave dipoles. So if you, if you want to know what the length of one side of a dipole is, just take the frequency divided by 234. Half link dipole, take the, whole, the total frequency divided by 468. Full wave loop, 1005. And then it breaks it all down for you. So 160 meters, 60 meters, 40 meters, and down the line. And then there's an example of what it would look like. That's slick. That's super cool. Listings of DXCC entities. Also, something that like, you know, not necessarily something I need all the time, but if I'm out in the middle of nowhere off grid, or maybe I'm on a camping trip, and I don't know who that was that I just made a contact with, well, 3D2 is Fiji. Huh, okay, cool. Now I know, <laughs> pretty cool. I guess it's a worked field too. Yeah, worked versus confirmed. Yeah, so double check mark there. Got Croatia, for instance. And it goes through the entire list of DXCC entities. Austin did an incredible job of compiling this information as well as contesting info. Again, you're out camping and you're like, oh buddy, what's all this traffic on the air? Well, it's a contest, you dummy. You didn't know you were going out on a contest weekend? Well, now you do. That's pretty slick. ARRL abbreviations for sections, Morse code practice times, the frequency that they're going to be on, digital transmissions for different types of contacts that they make and the frequencies they use, Morse code IARU beacons. These are beacons that you're going to hear on like uh, 28.200 for 10 meters, etc. WWB WWV information for time tracking or automatic time sync. It's almost turning into like a, uh, a, a pocket ref for radio communication, because it's got some preparedness stuff in here as well. So emergency water purification, some bleach purification standards to know, iodine. Now this page might not be ever for everybody, but this is a gear planning list. So a first line, second line, and third line. So it basically goes up through what you carry on your person, some kind of second line thing. So like a chest rig or a day pack, and then a full on backpack. And it literally says, you know, firearm, three magazines, knife, fire making. This is like your small bag, possibly belt pockets on your belt. Uh, EDC, so on your person. Hiking and adventure, this could be pockets or a small pouch. A day pack, day pack, day pack, which would include water, warm clothing, rain gear, first aid kit, food, small batteries, small survival kit. And then your full-on backpack, spare clothes, camouflage, shelter, sleep systems, food, water, cook batteries, ammunition, and then whatever gear you have in addition. So this could be a little checklist that you use for working out what could go in a pack. Now, there is a pretty decent amount of time that I noticed um, that spends talking about the grid map. And yeah, this is literally main right here. And it goes through all the grids basically in, oh, I see it, it, it flips. So you got to flip it this way. So here's down the Eastern seaboard through Savannah, Georgia. And then you'd have to flip it again, and that takes you through Florida. And you can continue to go through, looks like the contiguous, oh, no, it goes all the way up to, Austra um, to Alaska. There's the overarching grid, so CMDM, I'm in the DM area. Here's Hawaii, and now worldwide, wow. <laughs> going into some detail here, that's pretty cool. And then while you're on the map mindset, 
You can jump into international time codes for different areas where your offset is from UTC time. I think I'm going to put this in like, it, I need one of these for like every backpack I have. Now, this is where you would add your own information. So going back to talking about laminated cards, you could have laminated cards for these, but you could also just write it in using like a space pen. And there you got a good reference for local repeater quick references or just simplex tones. You could use that too. And there's a pretty decent size amount of pages in there. And then of course, now you have your radio memory quick, quick reference. So if you have a memory channel list, this is how you would identify that if you wanted to go that route. Equipment checklist, which is of course, why would you not have an equipment checklist? And then there you go, you got a radio log. So your location, your activity, date, time, frequency, time, your to from, so your RST, and then you know who that person is. So um, call it their call sign as part of their traffic. This is a really cool um, setup here. I, I really think that Austin did a fantastic job. I had a um, I had some of these in the first generation, which is just journal pages for grid sheets, so I left them in as well. This is a pretty packed book, but it still packs up really nice in your pack. This is a, a slam dunk. Austin, I, I think this is a, a really cool idea that you've done here, and you, you, you definitely should be proud of yourself for coming up with something like this. And, and really, so, so folks, this is $100, right? The baseline kit, what you just saw is, is $100. Now, it's the Write in the Rain notebook. It's all printed on these Write in the Rain pages. And the formatting, the design of all of this is all something Austin did. So if you are so inclined to do this yourself, knock yourself out, right? Go nuts. This is people like me, who is not necessarily going to put all the things like emergency water purification. I know of this because I was in scouts and I have done things like boiling and using bleach. Haven't really used the tablets and I, I don't often use iodine. I'll use a filter more often than that. But having the information on you and having the wherewithal to compile it in a book like this is really quite useful. So $100 is worth a peace of mind for a lot of you, not every one of you, but some of you are going to find this really helpful and useful. I, I think it's a I think it's a really cool that kit. So thank you, Austin, for sending this over to me. I really do appreciate it. And it's going in my go bag. So Austin did hand this to me when I was at the Orlando Hamcation and I had the first generation of uh, pages in here. They were slightly smaller font and he's since upgraded it as he's kind of gotten feedback and all that stuff. So whatever you see on the website is going to be the most up to date. And then obviously the modules that you can add for different types of radios. And there's actually a pretty decent variety of handhelds available now. Plus you can also ask for a custom job as well as some other details if there's something you'd rather have. For folks that are like M or you know storm watchers of some kind you probably could add more to this talking with Austin of course or possibly just on your own and add more greater functionality I think this is a great idea it fills a niche that I think has been lacking for a little while within amateur radio at least in the sense of like a form-fitted kind of emergency preparedness and personal emergency communications preparedness minded binder that is module in the sense that you can modify the packets in there but it's also right on because it's right in the rain tablet you can use that to add like your notes if you want to have a log you can add more log sheets to this grow it change it as you need to as a planner dude, uh, yeah, I'm a notebook planner kind of guy. This is like right up my alley. So good job, Austin. And for everybody watching, if you found this interesting, give me a comment below. Clickety, 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 clickety. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And until I talk to you again, 73.